Welcome to worship on this Sunday, June 20th. This is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We acknowledge that this worship service is virtual and that we are not all gathered in one place. I therefore ask each of you to be responsible for giving thanks for the land where you are and to acknowledge its current treaty holders. The church building here rests on the land known for millennia as Mokinsis. This is the area where the Bow River meets the Elbow River, and we know it today as Calgary. This is the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3 and the peoples of Treaty 7. These are the Nitsi'ipi people, the Siksiga, the Pigana, the Gaina, the Sutna, and the Iyahe peoples, and the Nakoda people, the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. It is the tradition of the Christian church in some places to keep a red lighted candle in the sanctuary. That is a symbol of Christ's constant presence with the church. Here in this place, we keep an orange lighted candle to remind us not only of Christ's constant presence, but of a reminder of the privilege we enjoy in this place as a result of unjust current and historic systems and of the imperative upon us to bring greater justice for a shared and sustainable future. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
Today's first reading is from Job, chapter 38, beginning at verse 1. Then Yahweh answered Job from the heart of the storm, Who is this obscuring my plans with such ignorant words? Hitch up your belt like the fighter you are. Now I will ask the questions and you will answer me. Where were you when I created the earth? If you know the answer, tell me. Who decided its size? Do you know? Who stretched the measuring line across it? Into what foundation were its pillars sunk? Who laid the cornerstone while all the choruses of morning stars sang and the heavenly court shouted for joy? And who held back the sea behind partitions when it burst forth from my womb? When I created clouds as the earth's raiment and thick darkness as its swaddling clothes. When I drew limits around the waters and locked the partitions in place and said, this is far and no more. This is where your mighty waves stay. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherds the poor 
Today's second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. As Christ's co-workers, we beg you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For God says through Isaiah, At the acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We take pains to avoid giving offense to anyone, for we don't want our ministry to be blamed. Instead, in all that we do, we try to present ourselves as ministers of God, acting with patient endurance amid trials, difficulties, distresses, beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger. We conduct ourselves with innocence, knowledge, patience, and kindness in the Holy Spirit, in sincere love, with the message of truth and the power of God, yielding the weapons of justice with both right hand and left, regardless of whether we are honored or dishonored, spoken of favorably or unfavorably. We are called impostors, yet we are truthful. We are called unknowns, yet we are famous. We are said to be dying, yet we are alive, punished but not put to death, sorrowful though we are always rejoicing, poor, yet we enrich many. We seem to have nothing, yet we possess everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, We've opened our hearts wide to you. We are not holding anything back. You, on the other hand, are holding back your affection from us. It would be a fair exchange, I speak as to my children, if you'd open your hearts as widely to us as we do to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 35. Glory to you, O Lord. With the coming of evening, Jesus said to the disciples, let's cross over to the other shore. Leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus in the boat in which he was sitting. There were other boats with them. Then a fierce gale arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so much that it was almost swamped. But Jesus was in the stern through it all, sound asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said, Teacher, doesn't it matter to you that we are going to drown? Jesus awoke, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be calm. And the wind dropped, and everything was perfectly calm. And then Jesus said to the disciples, Why were you so frightened? Have you no faith? But they became filled with fear, and they said to one another, Who is this whom even the wind and sea obey? The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our God of grace, peace, inclusion, comfort, healing. It's probably a shock to see a shift from the sanctuary at Lutheran Church of the Cross to this patio. But I bring you greetings from Austin, Texas, where Pastor Phil and I 
along with Pastor Phil's family, just scattered the ashes of Phil's parents just this afternoon. So uh, we pre-recorded the service and then bringing you this sermon in a more up-to-date fashion. So grace and peace to you. This biblical text is probably no surprise to you. You've probably heard it many times, the story of Jesus asleep in a boat and his disciples completely freaking out in a storm on the Sea of Galilee. And it's no surprise to us that Jesus' disciples do freak out because we know that we too freak out. People have been freaking out for centuries, uh, once given the call to follow Jesus and then faced with the reality that comes in living a day-to-day -day life. Things happen to us that challenge us, that threaten us, that downright scare us. And of course, we're just coming out of a time that has been such a time, you know, a scary global pandemic, the rival of which we haven't seen since the Spanish flu a hundred years ago. And coupled with the other things we have seen in our society, grappling most recently with the discovery of the graves of children at residential schools, which we are most assuredly likely to see more of. It has been a, a terrible year, a, a year of disconnection from our church community, a year of struggling and wrestling with our faith and with these challenges of all sorts. I was in the church just a couple of weeks ago and somebody reminded me that the pandemic has been very difficult for some people who have even lost their jobs and lost their way and don't know how they're going to make a way forward. For some of us, we have just hunkered down and tried to keep ourselves safe, waiting for the time that we would get an all clear that we could gather again. But other people have really, really struggled and lost uh, things very significant, jobs and homes and a sense of hope for their future. So how do we follow Jesus in these times when we're scared? Well, we see these disciples on this boat in the Sea of Galilee, looking around and noticing that Jesus is asleep and thinking, oh, maybe Jesus can actually do something about this. And so even in their panicked and freaked out state, they turn and they wake him up and what's remarkable in this story is that he turns to the storm and he says to the storm, Kayate, be quiet. Um, it's more along the lines of shut up. He says to the storm, shut up and be still. And then he turns to his friends in the boat, those whom he has called to follow him. And he says to them, where's your faith? As if to say, it should have been a clue to you when I was asleep during the storm and I wasn't worried about it that you were going to be okay because if you were threatened, I would have been threatened too. I wasn't worried, so neither can you. Well, it's a great message. If Jesus isn't worried, we shouldn't be worried either. Easy to say, but not so hard to do. Not, easy to say, but not so easy to do. Harder to do. Not so easy to do. Because when we're threatened, we're threatened. When we're scared, we're scared. When we're anxious, we're anxious. And to deny the feelings that we have is almost worse than to live through it and to wonder where God is and if our faith is going to be strong enough to save us. In these next few weeks, as we begin to open things up in Calgary again, and we begin to open things up at church again, and you start to experiencing, experience your life becoming somewhat normal again, I think it's safe to wonder, where do we go from here? Who are we as a community? And to examine our faith and what this time has meant to us. Who are we now in light of the hardship we have suffered? And who are we now in light of the hardships we still face? Uh, who are we as we discover the graves of children? Who are we as we walk with people who have lost their jobs, maybe lost their homes? Who are we as we begin to think about life after a pandemic? 
So this story has a lot of parallels, and it always has had parallels with the lives of disciples, no matter what the current challenge is, what the local challenge is, what the challenge of the day is. This text has a lot to say to us about trusting the one who's in the boat with us, the one who may seem to be asleep but has the power to tell the storm itself to shut up. This much is not new. But what may be new is to notice that in this text, the gospel writer Mark tells us at the very beginning of the text, they got into the boat with Jesus just as he was, but there were other boats with them. We tend to think of this text so much of, as we're in the boat with Jesus, we're the disciples, he's with us, but maybe we should pause Maybe we should pause and take notice that there are other boats with them. There are other boats tossed about on that storm. There are other boats, boats full of other people who are also freaking out. Other people who may not be known to us at all. And in light of that, what's really great about this text is that when Jesus turns to the storm and he says, Kayate, silence shut up everything becomes calm for everyone our God who's in the boat with us our Savior Jesus who travels this sea with us who gives us our confidence that we can trust that things will be okay because he's with us is also the God of all the other boats He's providing a way for all of us together. And it doesn't matter if people are following him or called by him, or even if they have never heard of him, he's calming the sea for all of us. He's calming the sea of all humanity. And he's calling us, the ones who are in the boat with him, to have faith, to have faith in his presence, to have faith in his power, to have faith in his plan for a bright and shared humanity for everyone. People of God, take heart because a new time is dawning, a new day is dawning, a new era for us as a church, a new era for us as friends and neighbors to one another a new era for us as disciples, but a new era for us as human beings. And this is an era that for sure will have difficult work, but we're called to do that work together. And we're called to do that with the one who calms the storms, not just for us, but for all people. We have the chance now to make a beautiful life, a reconciling life, a healing life, a life where we accompany one another and we take notice of people in other boats who are benefiting from the healing and the power of Jesus Christ, who tells every storm, Kayate, silence, shut up. May faith carry you. May it undergird you. May it remind you who you are at your deepest, truest self. And may it remind you that Jesus is in the boat with you, but he's calling all of us to good work for all people, no matter where we find ourselves, how violent the storm seems, or how unsure we are of how it's all gonna turn out. Our God is the God of us all. And that surely is cause for thanks. Grace and peace be with you. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's only only Son, our our Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, suffered suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be made known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. God, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. 
Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us all from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness, that through their leadership you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you hold in your hands the lives of all who suffer. In this time of sorrow, incomprehension, and tragedy, help us stand together. Bring your mercy and your healing to the sick and your health and strength to all who care for them. We especially pray for those that ask us to pray. Gemma, Dave, Yvonne, Gil and Elsie, Lynn, Ella, Edie, Dirk, Lorna, Sheila and Jim, Marlene, Bill and Ruth, Devona, Zella, Lorne, Eric, Alan, and all those who mourn, the Sanders, Hoogie, Nautiker, Wells, Julen, Ian, Leonhart, Monroe, Maunula, Kerbison, Sandham, Stevenson, Sorensen, and Craven families. Lord, in your mercy. God, 
your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost their children. Bless and strengthen them, Lord, in your mercy. our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with, with you. you. I invite you to share a sign of the Lord's peace with one another, that with those that you may be gathered with, or to think um, peaceful thoughts or prayers and wish them for those that are not with you, but you know would like that, to have that peace. This is normally the time the ushers would be coming forward and passing the offering plates. Uh, we're still not uh, gathered in person to worship, um, but would, uh, again, thanks for your generosity and would remind you that there are, the website has numerous ways that you can give your offering if you choose to do so. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven. In heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This morning we will not be gathering for online worship. We're actually still on vacation. Uh, and also would remind you that the office continues to be closed with only remote hours. And now receive a blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. i 
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.